talking about this issue that I feel um, there is with the manga slash anime Boruto, the next generation of Naruto. And then the anime started. And the anime did something completely different. The anime started at a point in history, or in, in, the, in the fictional history, even way before the movie. So while the manga started with adapting the movie because it was such a slow process, the anime got released at a similar time, slightly later, but at a similar time in real, real life time, our world time, um, but was released weekly. Shinobi no jidai wa owaru. Koko made yaru to wa na, Kawaki. Omae mo nana dai me to onaji tokoro e okutte yaru yo, Boruto. Kou naru shika na katta no ka? So da. And adapted, or not adapted, but presented a story that was supposed to lead up to the events of the manga. And this is a thing in the past. Um, also, I'm probably going to make a movie about that, about the issue with filler versus canon material presented in anime. When animes catch up to the manga, there are usually three chapters three options um, um, an anime has. Either A, this is what One Piece has mostly done recently, is just slow down everything and include like micro filler, if I can call it this way, just stretching everything. Scenes where like Big Mom is just in frame and breathing. <sighs> and, where things nothing's gonna happen where pretty much episodes are wasted on boring content N no not wanna um diss the anime of one piece in this video that's not the content um the second way an animes can handle this is just putting in a lengthy filler um and a third way to handle this is to take a break to go on a hiatus and um, take a long break. This is a way that this is, this this way I think is is the way that many newer shonen stories, not just shonen, but many many anime that got released in the in the last five to ten years, handle this. Um, Boku no Hero handled is this way. Um, Kimetsu no Yaiba takes long breaks between seasons. Um, Shingeki no Kyojin. Uh, these long breaks can feel painful, especially in the age of streaming services where um, it's easy to catch up quickly to watch 10 episodes in a marathon like bam, 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 bam. To just go through 10 episodes of Shingeki no Kyojin, Attack on Titan, um, by the way, I'm a huge Attack on Titan fan. Um, and then to sit there feeling like, okay, what's next? So those three ways for an anime to handle the time when it's, when it's approaching the manga. Stretching it, slash micro filler, filler, long, fillers like episodes or whole filler seasons 
or taking a break. And Naruto, the original Naruto that aired uh, late 90s, early 2000s, chose to go that route, chose to include lots of filler. And there have been some things, content introduced in the anime that had been um, controversial and not been in harmony with the rest of the story because the manga author had not introduced certain concepts or explanations yet. That's the important thing. The mangaka has a certain concept or explanation for a technique event or character's behavior in mind, why certain things transpired the way or certain things work the way they are. And there's the risk of um, the anime shooting past the finishing line, like just going past what they're supposed to do and coming up with their own explanations. And that had been the issue with the anime in the past, I feel. And that's what they did with Boruto. That's what they did to a huge, 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 extreme amount. And this is the problem where the fandom plays a part in this dynamic that creates a spiral of problematic content. And yeah, it's maybe a hard thing to try to alienate a part of the fandom and say, hey, you are the bad guys, you effed up the manga that I love. But this is how I feel, because they introduced the Boruto's special eye in the anime. <laughs> Which was something that was hinted at in the very, very first chapter of Boruto, the manga. But without really much context, explanation or anything, in the very first chapter of Boruto. Before it's just dedicating two to three pages before it then shifted into a flashback which is pretty much the, the whole Boruto story that we have up to now, starting with the adaptation of the movie. In that very beginning, the first few pages, we saw Boruto as an adult fighting a mysterious guy, we later know it's Kawaki, fighting a mysterious guy and Boruto having um, a slash on his eye wielding a katana or a long blade that looks like Sasuke's sword, wearing a ninja attire very similar to adult Sasuke, and opens up his slashed left eye once a kind of seal spreads across his body. At that point, mysterious. There was no explanation what that was, what's the nature of that technique. Me personally, my gut told me like, oh my god, he had a slash on his eye that looked kind of reminiscent of Kakashi. Maybe Boluto lost his original eye at some point in his life and then got a Byakugan transplanted and the, the black, white, white, white the, the white part of the eye being blackened. I assume that's not due to his eye technique, due to the, the, his special eye, but simply due to his seal spreading across his body, kind of reminiscent of um, Sasuke's cursed seal that also made the white part of the eyes look black, turn black. So I thought he lost 
An eye at some point in his life got a new eye transplanted and has probably some kind of seal, cursed seal technique that he uses in tandem with his eye to fight off this mysterious enemy. And then the anime came and introduced some kind of un also unexplained, really wacky eye technique in one of Boruto's eyes and to me it felt like it makes no sense. Why, why should he awaken an eye technique in only one eye? I mean Sasuke did too, but <laughs> why should he awaken one eye and what was even the necessity of him having that, that slash, that scar on his eye? I thought, I felt the, the anime just went way past what they were supposed to, to do. And they introduced concepts and ideas that probably have not been talked about with, with the mangaka. And then they went and named it. And it was never, it was never, ever, effing, ever named by the mangaka in the manga or by anyone who worked officially on the manga. Not Kishimoto, not anyone of the assistants who now took over the manga, Boruto. It was never, ever named uh, Jugan. Never. It was never. It was, it was posted, or it was, it's a term that comes from one of the staff working for P Pierrot, the, the animation studio in Japan, which handles the animation of Naruto. And he posted that on Twitter. And then the fandom and anime dedicated channels like um, ABD, Anime Bald, Steep, and um, uh, For Never News. I, I don't know his channels, For Never World or For Never News. Um, a bunch of, of, of YouTube anime content. Um, dedicated YouTubers jumped on the wagon and talked about the Jugan. And I was just, I, I thought like, oh my God, what are you doing? You, you, you're creating, it's kind of like a, I feel the Jugan is, is like, it's like the devils and chainsaw man. It's, <laughs> it's never have been a, a thing, but the moment you start thinking about it and fearing it or, or, taking it as an entity, it starts to manifest, it starts to become real. And I think, I think the manga never in, intended or even thought about Jugan. I think, no, I think that's, and the story is in now like 70 chapters and over, over the course of 70 chapters, Boruto has never, never exhibited any kind of ability or awakening specifically in that one eye. Never. He was shown with Byakugan, um, which is not clear if it's his own inherent Byakugan ability or due to uh, Momoshiki manifesting in him and him turning Otsutsuki. But this is the issue that this is not, this is just one example, but that the anime created content and a story that is parallel, but not in line with the manga, that creates its own content and then tries to come back to the manga, adapting the manga from time to time, which is a horrible cluster <laughs> to say the least it's it's a horrible disaster and the problem is the anime is actually quite popular i heard or even more popular than the manga at least it was for some time in terms of sales so the anime not unpopular creates content that is not in accordance with the source material and then the source material created has to 
kind of not incorporate that, but try not to step on the anime. And the manga's not bad. The manga's not bad, but here comes the second part of the big issue. And that is, it seems due to this whole popularity, um, disharmony, and the, all, all of the things that I talked and addressed about, that there had been a lot of pressure, this is my feeling, on the mangaka, the, originally the assistant of Kishimoto, who was responsible for the script, for the story. And it seems there has been some internal conflict. Japanese people usually are very... Um, closed and not very open about discussing issues. It has a lot to do with preventing the loss of face, especially the loss of face of a company, because group harmony is a concept that is really important in Japan, which is also why there is um, tatemai and hone. In Japanese, tatemai means the, the social face or the public face um, sometimes just translated as face, um, and hone, which means true character or true intention, true feeling. So holding back your, your true feeling or how you truly um, stand regarding something, how, what's, what's your stand regarding something, how you feel about something, truly that's usually held back and um rather japanese put up um a mask a social face which is tatemai uh which is usually resolves ar around staying ambiguous um not saying any harsh things not saying anything that can be interpreted in any way strongly so i feel um, Shueisha, the company that, that owns um, the rights for the franchise and is publishing, along with Kishimoto and the assistants that took over the jobs of, of the art, illustrating and the storytelling. I think there have been some um, problems between these, some some arguments probably and the one who originally was responsible for the um the the script the the story the story writing ukyo kodachi was pretty much off he was fired um he was taken out of the project he was like so it's like Shueisha or whoever said, like, man, you you you're running you're running the manga into the ground, like. Um, and then the problem is, what do we do? Who else is gonna take care of this manga? Okay, let's get the OG back. Let's get Kishimoto back, who is the original father who created Naruto. So he should be able to do it. And I think fans were kind of like, ooh, yeah, Kishimoto's coming back. Um, but I, I, I wasn't even so displeased. I thought after, after this problematic time of covering, of this lengthy, long, problematic time of covering the movie and also needing some time to find its art style, I think the the manga kind of got on track and found its own style and I was I was actually liking it. I mean 
me not getting presented what I wish for and thinking, oh, that character should be like this or act like this or should have that outcome. The outcome I wish the most for might not be the outcome that is most beneficial to tell the story that an author wants to tell. So 